Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. First stop, Vinton Forest. This is a really cool area because the oldest iron furnace in the United States that was actually imported block by block from Belgium is in this forest. I'm not sure exactly where it's at out here. I have seen pictures of it on the internet, but I'm going to find it this summer and probably try to do another trip out here to check it out. But I came out here today to do a park activation for Parks on the Air on Ham Radio. We're going to talk more about that and why we're doing it here and where we're going from here in just a minute. Stay with me, guys. Okay, guys, while we're getting the radio set up and the laptop set up to do FT8 call, first of all, let's talk about why I'm doing what I'm doing. I told you before in a video we talked about that things like Parks on the Air, Propagation Reports, FT8, JS8, all those types of systems that are that you can use with your radio will show you where your signals are propagating to, show you who you are able to communicate with. And that's important because you can test different antenna setups, different weather conditions, different times of the year for propagation, and see what your radio is doing or capable of doing depending on the radio that you're carrying. And I'm only transmitting five watts right now. And I've got a ham stick on top of this Jeep. And I've got a metal cap on this Jeep from Smart Cap. So I've got a solid metal ground plane around that antenna. It works really, really well tuned into 20 meters for this vehicle application. Now I can walk away from the vehicle with my backpack and I've got an in-fed half wave in there. I can throw up in a tree and it works even better than the one on my truck. But the one on my truck works good for mobile comms. And again, the radio is simple to set up in the vehicle and simple to take out of the vehicle. It's not permanently mounted or anything like that. So that makes comms systems simple for different modes. Now, the reason I'm concentrating on wildlife areas is because I'm doing some parks on the air stuff to kind of verify, again, where my signals are propagating to, how many people I can talk to, things like that. Because parks on the air, when I record that, it will tell me where those people are at that I was talking to very easily as I'm activating these parks. And it gets you outdoors. You know, I'm in... a uh, an experimental forest right now that is probably 30 miles maybe ish from where I live and there are lots and lots of wild areas or wildlife areas around where I live so I'm going to concentrate on activating each one of those so that I'm forced to visit those wildlife areas and there may be some that I have never been to before I happen to have been to this one several times I love this wildlife area in the forest area so I've been here several times in my Jeep but I thought I'd activate this one today. I'm gonna to try to activate two or three of them in a row today that are kind of in a circle going back toward my house. So that's what we're gonna to do today and that's why we're doing it. And now let's talk a little bit about FT8 call as we get this set up. Okay, okay, so this is the JS8 call screen on WJ, WS, JTX, excuse me. And you can see on this side of the screen, just a quick explanation. This is people sending out their call signs, calling CQ and signals that I'm picking up on this software. These are messages going out for me doing parks on the air. The red are messages coming back to me. I'll explain all that to you in just a minute. And you have a graph here that shows basically a waterfall of the signals across the band. All right. Now, I've got my radio up here. You see there's a lot of noise in that thing right now and it's coming from my laptop being charged off of an anchor brick over here all right that's why the noise but i'm getting signal through the noise no problem that's part of the beauty of this system is that you can send signals out and js8 call is or jt ft8 the beauty of this thing is that FT8 can dig those signals out of the noise. And so it's a digital mode going over radio waves. There's no internet hooked up to it, no satellites, no nothing. It's completely off the grid once the software is loaded onto the computer. And that's the caveat. You have to have that piece of software to encode, decode that text from the radio waves. But that's what's happening right now is my computer is decoding this stuff and the message that I send out is encoding. And it's a very simple system that you put a standard message on there and you can see mine says CQ POTA is my first standard message I send out when I enable 
a transmission and then someone comes back to me and answers me with their grid as you can see this guy did here with his grid sorry about that didn't mean to highlight that and then it drops down and does a standard set of messages for signal reports and then says thank you so it's a very simple system to let you know hey he hears me i hear him here's how he hears me here's how i hear him as far as the signal report goes and thank you for the conversation without even picking up a microphone so if you're into the digital stuff or the computer stuff or you're trying to get a kid into this stuff this is an easy way to do that because kids are all into computers and programs and technology this technology is amazing it takes up less bandwidth even than morse code to be able to send these simple texts out on ft8 jsa call which another program we'll talk about later can even be a little more complicated with the text and it's not standard text it's actually text that you type in and send and it's almost just as fast so Let's see if we can activate this park. We've got two QSOs in the log already. So what I'll do now is I'll drop down here. This is still sending signal reports from the last one. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the 73 as I've received his signal report now. I'm gonna jump one and send that out to the guy. You can see right there it is 73. To him from me in yellow and it's prompting me to log that QSO in my database log. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to the bottom and call CQ again, which means now I'm saying, hey, here I am. Talk to me. I'm trying to activate a park, which is why it says CQ POTA. And when a red comes back, we'll see that. And when this message goes out, and you can see our radio is transmitting now. And that message just went out, CQ POTA, my call sign, my grid. Now we just wait for someone to answer that. Okay, so you can see here, my signal went out four times unanswered CQ POTA. And then somebody came back and hit me and it went through his grid, how he received my signal, minus six and 73, thank you very much, asking me to log. And this is my third QSO in probably five minutes. It's working really well today. Okay, I've got two going on at once right now. I've got K5UUT sending me a message, and I've also got N5MB sending me a message. So the program automatically defaults to the first guy. So it's going to go through his message string first, and then I'll pick up the second guy. And that's going to give me two in a row right there. I only need 10 to activate the park. I'm already up to four. This will be five with these two guys. Now I can kind of click back and forth if one guy's not responding very fast, like this guy, K5UT is not responding to my signal report very fast. So I can double click on this other guy, N5MB, and it will automatically switch over and start the text string with him. And then I can pick the other guy back up and double click on his when he comes back with his signal report. Okay, just a little bit now about parks on the air, what it takes for a legal QSO to be logged. I've got two guys going on at the same time right now. Both of them have sent me their grid. I've sent both of them a signal report and neither one of them has responded back. Until I get their re-signal report and I understand how they're hearing me and that they're hearing me again, it's not a legal QSO. It would be just like me calling a, a CQ, somebody calling me back and saying, here I am, and then you drop the call, basically. And you can't talk to them anymore. That's what's going on right now. So until one of those guys answers me back with a signal report, like that guy just did, now that's a legal QSO because I've given him a signal report, he's given me a signal report. We're good. Now I'll give him to go through the 73's motion with him. My computer's automatically picked that up and it's sending the next Roger Roger that I received him. And it's going to go down to the 73 and log it in my log. And then I'll try to pick that other guy up again. Okay, so this guy... K5UT, he has never come back to me after I sent him a signal report. So right now I'm dead in the water with that guy and I'm gonna go back to sending my standard CQ message, enable with DX, a TX there, and send out CQ POTA again and just wait for him to pick back up on it. If he doesn't, then that's just one I, I dropped and lost. All right, we had a pretty long string of CQs there with nothing. And now all of a sudden, bam, bam. 
we picked up two guys calling us at one time. So we'll try to work that and see what happens here. You can see it's already responding to one of those guys with the automated string, sent him a signal report. And that was the first guy on the list. The program automatically picks that up because I've got call first checked in the box. And there is a long explanation on how to set this program up and I'll leave that for later or I'll refer you to someone else's video for that and we'll talk about it a little bit after I manage this situation here. Okay, so let's talk about this program real quick that's running FT8. The program again is called WJ, WSJT dash X, WSJT dash X. It's free software. Download it on your computer, set it up, and it will run in that digital mode off of your ham radio. You do have to have a general license to do this kind of stuff. I'm not going to walk through the setup of this program because it's fairly complicated and I don't feel like I have the knowledge base that it takes to teach someone to set this program up. It is kind of finicky. I would suggest you watch some videos like on Ham Radio Crash Course. Josh Noss has got some really good videos on this stuff. There's quite a few other YouTubers out there that have good videos on this stuff. The one thing I didn't find when I was looking for videos on how to do this stuff, I did not find, I, when I first started working with this, I would notice over in the call screens where the CQs were that I showed you in green, it would, where I said, it said CQDX, that's overseas. There were things that said CQ POTA, which means they were doing parks on the air activations with FT8. And I was like, well, how are they doing that? Because part of that whole thing is when you call and you're doing it on phone, you're saying, you know, CQ, 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 parks on the air. This is Kilo Echo 8 Sierra Papa Sierra at park number. Okay, and you give your park number so that everybody talking to you knows what park you're at. You don't have that luxury with this FT8 program because it's a standard line of messages that just gives signal reports, roger, roger, thanks for playing, basically. Which is what you have to have for POTA. So what you have to do is you have to go in and you have to spot yourself on the POTA website to let people know what park you are at. And then when you turn in your POTA log, if someone hunts you, they'll get credit for that hunt kind of a explanation that may not make sense to you if you don't understand POTA, but you can go to the POTA website and read Parks on the Air website and read all about that stuff. I'm a big advocate of Parks on the Air because it gets people out into parks. Like I said, I'm constant, concentrating right now on wildlife areas and lakes. Um, I was at a lake yesterday. I was at a wildlife area yesterday. I activated a lake yesterday, a lake state park yesterday. I'm activating a couple wildlife areas today, hopefully three or four. I like to get like a grand slam of wildlife areas today. There's three or four right in this general area. But the software for this stuff is free. It doesn't cost you anything. The software it takes to get your timing right on your computer, which is important with this mode, is also free. So once you have the radio, once you have the license, once you have a, a laptop that's capable of running Windows 10, which my laptop was $200 at Walmart. It's a gateway laptop, and it's working perfect for all of this stuff, 200 bucks. So it's not that big of an expenditure to buy a laptop to use just for your computer work. And I use it for logging, I use it for my data modes and things like that. Uh, I'm trying to download Grid Tracker right now to track grids of where people are at, what grids I've worked in the US. That's kind of the fun of all of this stuff is working different people in different areas, to all the states, working different continents, things like that. And one thing I'm noticing today is on PSK Reporter is my signal is not going across the ocean like it was yesterday. Yesterday I was way into Europe. Today I'm only hitting in the United States and into Canada basically north-south. My Jeep is oriented north-south, the same way it was yesterday. Antenna setup is the same as it was yesterday. So the only difference, I think, is the weather. Today, we have a heavy overcast sky. Yesterday was a bright, sunny day. That may have something to do with how the signals are propagating. I don't know that for sure. That's just an educated guess from what I see different from yesterday and today. Um, it looks like I've called POTA about 10 times and nobody's answered me, and I only need like one more QSO to activate this park. So. And then we're going to move on to another park. So we'll see what happens here. Stay with me. Oh, there he is right there. Okay, so there's our 10th guy. We are just talking about 
I called po CQ for a long time and doesn't get anybody. There he is right there. So now it's going through the, no, it's not. It should be going through the standard string of messages. As soon as I receive that, it should jump up to this one, but it didn't for some reason. And he sent me twice and it still didn't jump up there. So I'll just do it for him and double click on his name. Now it will automatically activate it. As you can see, I just sent him a signal report. Now it's going to activate those messages. May just be a glitch in the software. Sometimes you just got to watch what you're doing. That's all. Okay, so you can see I've given him a signal report. I've received a signal report. It's going down through the 73s. Boom, there's my log queue. So that's my 10th contact or QSO in this park. So that's actually activated this park for me. But I'm going to wait for one more just as a just in case measure in case something doesn't work out around the log or i can't i've miscounted or i can't figure out a call sign or something like that i just like to have one extra just in case and then i'm going to move parks okay i kind of got hung up after i took that 11th call because somebody else hit me up but on my 10th activation there kilo echo 5 echo uniform alpha that guy just spotted me. It came up on my phone that he spotted me on the POTA website. We'll talk more about that in a little while too, but that's somebody telling the other people on the POTA website, hey, I just talked to this guy and he's activating a park. And that will kind of help people find you as well. I use that a lot when I'm doing voice to kind of fish out and hunt parks on the air activators. So we'll see if this guy comes back to me or not. I've sent him three, four signal reports now and he hasn't come back to me yet. I'll let it go for four or five more. If it doesn't come up, I'm going to move parks. So we just pulled into Lake Alma, right on the lake parked here. And two calls out and boom, first contact. Alpha Charlie 5, Juliet Sierra. Already came back with signal reports, 73s and ready to rock and roll to the next contact. So one thing I didn't tell you about this place is there's no cell service out here. So it was a little bit tricky to get myself set up to do a pod activation here because I couldn't spot myself from inside the park. So I had to spot myself about a mile away and then drive into the park and get set up for the pod activation. That's kind of a key thing to put your activation or spot yourself on the pod website so that you let people know that you're out here that are hunting pod activations. And with no cell service out here, you're truly in an off-grid scenario. You can't look at your signal reports from PSK on the internet. You can't see people's call signs when they come up in Ham RS. You just have to kind of trust what's going on and go after it. And you can see I'm having success, so it's no worries. So we're waiting on one more call, one more QSO. To activate this park we have to have 10 i like to have 11. we need one more for 10. i'll wait for one more after that before i move to the next park but i thought what i'd explain to you real quick and i didn't talk about too much with this program is what it actually kind of does what it does is it takes text and it encodes it into radio waves and then the program decodes that text from the person receiving it and then it encodes their text when they send it back and your computer decodes it again so it is a data mode for operating on the radio, which is very, very cool because you can think of it like texting on a phone. And this is an abbreviated version of that. Like I said, JSA call is a little bit more complex. You can put a little bit more message on that than just a standard row of messages you have on FT8. But it's the same concept without internet, without satellites, only using radio waves and that's the cool thing about it
Okay, so here's something I just encountered. And again, I'm in an area that I have no service. I'm at Richland Furnace Wildlife Area now. No service here whatsoever. This guy was sending me messages and I was trying to get him back. But the time differential is 1.6 seconds. Now, it should work with anything under a two second differential on the time, but it might not. It's very sensitive to that stuff. So I need to synchronize the time on my computer. Again, free software to do that. And I should have done it before I left the house and I didn't do it. And that's probably why I can't decode his messages. You can see these time differentials are, a lot of them are over one second. I'd rather see all of them under one second, to be honest with you. But I should be able to make it happen. We'll find out. Okay, so I think I'm gonna move and hopefully I find a different entrance to this wildlife area. I have no service, so my GPS isn't working right either. However, you can see I've called Poet a lot of times with only that one response that I couldn't get back to. I think this time differential is killing me. I also am looking at the DB over here on the other side and they're all way into minus. Um, it should be able to decode anything to minus 30 according to what I've been told. But I know that anything, you know, in the deep negatives is not good. And I know that time differentials over a second are not optimal. And I also have a power line right up here. Not too far from me here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Which is probably screwed up my signal too. So I'm going to try to find a different spot. Hopefully I won't have to go to a different wildlife area to get it. Right, so we just hit Cooper Hollow Wildlife Area. Transmitting now. We had one contact. Quite a bit of snow out there right now, coming down. Love it. Right, Kila Alpha Zero Juliet Zulu X-Ray put us up to number six. So we got four to go in this park. Kind of quit snowing a little bit now. No big deal. We're out here for the duration. Hopefully we can get her done. We still got one park to go and get late in the day here. Okay, the goal today was four parks, three down, but it's almost four o'clock in the afternoon. And I'd like to get this video uploaded tonight and edited. So we'll see what happens. Snowed quite a bit while I've been sitting here. Probably snowed an inch and a half, but snow's done now. See what we can do to get over to one last park tonight. Try to activate that. Here's the hoping. Okay, last park of the day, hopefully. Just called our first CQ. Got our incomings populated over here. See if anybody answers fairly quick here and we'll get rocking. All right, so these two guys I'm working right now are number 910 for the Grand Slam of four parks in one day out here. Hoorah. All right, guys, we got her done. Four parks in one day. Now I'm gonna show you a last map from PSK Reporter that shows you all of the signals that we sent out today that were received by other people. You're gonna see we hit Alaska, we hit Australia, we hit Europe. We were all over the map today, depending on where we were, what the weather conditions were, because sometimes it was sunny, sometimes it was snowing, sometimes it was cloudy. That changes things a little bit, depending on where we were parked in conjunction to other things. And just propagation, you know, sometimes it's hard to figure that stuff. But we did get out a long ways today. We talked to a lot of people today, and we got it done. So I appreciate you joining me for this video. I appreciate everything that you do for me, for my family, for my business, all our sponsors, structure affiliates, and friends. I'll be back to the video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.